Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on filter design. On my previous two video on filter design, okay, the first video, I actually introduced the formulas that are required to calculate a band pass filter using couple line. So this will be the objective of first video. I introduce all the necessary formulas in order for us to design a couple line band pass filter. On the second video, I actually had an example, an example, for example, determine the bandwidth of the band pass filter, okay, etc. And basically with the spec, I actually design a couple line band pass filter. So this is the objective of the second video. This video, okay, the one that you are seeing now, is actually the third video. Okay, so this video, the objective is to introduce how can we actually to find the width and also the gap of the couple line, basically configure in microchip line for a band pass filter. In short, this video, I'm going to show you how can we actually obtain the width of the couple line and also the gap in between the couple line so that we can implement a band pass filter using couple line. So this will be the objective of this video. This will be the part 26 series discussion on filter design. So guys, if you're keen to know more about filter design, for example, low pass filter, band pass filter, high pass filter, band reject or band stop filter. Okay guys, you can take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on filter design. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Okay, before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by consider to like this video. If you have learned something from this video, again, guys, hopefully you can consider to subscribe to this channel. Please also turn on your notification bell so that you will be able to receive more information from this channel. Guys, once again, thank you so much for strong support. Okay, so let's move on to the first page of this. Okay, for example, this is the first video. Okay, I do a very quick summarize on the first video. I actually introduced the formula. Okay, so these three set of formulas, this is basically on the end one. This is basically on the last session. This is in between the first and the last session, which means the N2, N3 actually using this formula. Okay, don't worry if you're not sure what I'm saying now. Again, please look at the first video. Okay, you will be able to understand. From there, I actually managed to calculate the even and odd mode characteristic impedance. So this is what I have mentioned on the first video. On the second video, I actually give you an example. Okay, the example of the second video is actually illustrated here. So for example, this video task that I need to design n is equal to 3. However, for couple line, okay, band pass filter, for example, n is equal to 3, then I need to have m plus 1 couple line. Okay, so therefore, from here, you can see that I need 4 sessions of couple line in order to design this couple line band pass filter. So this will be n1, n2, N3 and N4. Okay, so next. Okay, so this is the formula that I show on the second video. Okay, so these are the formulas that allow me to calculate the even mode characteristics and also the odd mode characteristics here. So again, if you are not so sure, please take a look on the second video, okay, which I have shown how can we actually calculate the even and also the odd mode characteristic impedance. So this table a little bit messy. So basically what I do here is I summarize all the table into this. So from here, you can see that the even and odd mode characteristic impedance for the couple line under the session one is shown over here. So this will be the session two, okay, the even and odd mode characteristic impedance. You can see that they are actually symmetric. Okay, so N2 is equal to N3 and N1 is equal to N4. So I'm done with this couple line example. Okay, one thing that I never highlight on my previous video is basically 
the length of the couple line need to be lambda over 4 or 90 degree. Okay, so this is something that I'm not sure whether I mentioned, but over here, let me quickly mention that the length of the couple line should be lambda over 4 or 90 degree. So with this, okay, I'm ready to design the couple line. Okay, so what need to be done on the next page here? Okay, so basically, I need to describe the characteristics of the microstrip line. Okay, consider the effect of loss when this filter is implemented with a microstrip substrate that having this, the substrate thickness is 0 0.158 centimeter. Okay, mu R is 4.2. Okay, the loss tangent is 0 0.02 and the conductor, copper conductor is 0 0.5 mu thickness. Well, so this is actually 0 0.5 mu thickness. Okay, the thickness of the substrate, okay, which is 0 0.158. Okay, the mu R is equal to 4.2. Okay, and then this is the loss. Okay, so after this, okay, we are ready to design the couple line. Remember this video, I'm going to design, okay, for example, how to find out the width of the couple line and also the gap of the couple line. Okay, over here is actually a freeware that allow us to calculate, okay, what will be the width, okay, what will be the gap in between the couple line in order to achieve the even and of mode characteristic impedance. So let's take a look on the apps, uh, the link here in order to calculate the width and also the slot of the couple line. Okay, on your left is actually the freeware that I can actually use to calculate the width and also the gap for the couple line to design a bandpass filter. Okay, however, I did a detailed search it almost very difficult. Okay, for example, okay, I actually have worked up that the odd characteristic impedance and the even characteristic impedance. And from here, I actually want to obtain the width and also the gap of the couple line. So this is what we want to do. Basically, directly from the odd characteristic impedance and the even more characteristic impedance, we should be able to get the W and also the gap. Okay, but the emphasis for this video is all the freeware. So if you search all the freeware, okay, I guess that this is the best I can search. Over here, you can see that I can't get this odd characteristic impedance and even characteristic impedance to find the W and the gap of the couple line. But over here, I actually can calculate, okay, based on the width and also the gap of the couple line, the width of the couple line and also the gap of the couple line, I should be able to obtain the odd characteristic impedance and also the even more characteristic impedance. So over here, I need to do a reverse engineering. Okay, I need to reverse find the width, find the gap, and then basically to see whether it meets our needs to design the odd characteristic impedance and the even characteristic impedance. Okay, if you still recall, this is what we want to achieve for the stage number one. Okay, so this is what we need to achieve. The odd characteristic impedance need to be 39.24 and the even more characteristic impedance needs to be 70.61. Okay, so let's start up. Let me show you, for example, what need, what need to be done. Okay, okay for example, the question already tells us that the trace thickness or the copper thickness, okay, which is 0 0.5 mu, which is given by the example, on the earlier PowerPoint that I showed it to you. Okay, the substrate height is 0 0.158 centimeter, and then basically I convert into millimeter, which is 1.58 millimeter. Okay, this is the width that I need to decide what will be the width value, and this is the gap in between the couple line, which I also need to decide. The dielectric constant will be 4.2. Okay, so now I'm ready to design. Okay, for example, let's say I decide the width as two, and the gap in between the couple line as one. Okay, so basically I press the word calculate. Okay, you can see that the outcome for the odd and the even mode is shown over here. Okay, so I want to meet this data, okay, so that you can actually do this on your own also. Okay, for example, what I do over here is basically the width I do as two mm, and then my gap in between, I actually do it as one mm. And over here, I actually obtain so-called my odd characteristic impedance, which is 56.1. And I also managed to get my even characteristic impedance, which is 72.2. Okay, so basically, this is what I have achieved 
with, with the width 2 and the gap 1. Okay, so I want to vary some data so that I know how to control my width, for example, so that I can control my odd characteristic impedance and also the even more characteristic impedance. Okay, for example, let's say I increase my width to 2.1. Okay, so I increase my width to 2.1. I want to see what will be the outcome. So basically, I just press calculate and the odd characteristic impedance okay, become 54.8. 54.8 and my even become 70.1. Okay, so let's understand this data here. Okay, so over here, you can see that okay, uh, what happened here is basically uh, when I actually increase my width to 2.1, Okay, and then I remain my gap as one. Okay, so when I actually increase the width of the couple line, you can see that my odd characteristic impedance actually reduce. Can you see here? My even characteristic impedance also reduce. So when I actually increase my width, okay, both my odd characteristic impedance and also even more characteristic impedance, they actually reduce, as you can see from here. So next, okay, I want to do more variation. Okay, for example, now I want to change the width back to 2. Uh, maybe the gap, let's say I change to 0 0.8 so that I have some understanding. When I actually change the gap, what will happen? Okay, so uh, the width, I go back to 2. Okay, but I change my gap to 0 0.8. Okay, let's see what happened. Okay, so when I press, press the word calculate, okay, so this is my so-called Odd characteristic impedance, which is 53.6, and my even characteristic impedance, which is 73.8. Okay, so what is actually the outcome? Can you see over here? I'm comparing, comparing the first and the third one. Okay, the gap I actually reduced from 1 to 0 0.8. So you can see that my odd characteristic impedance actually reduced. Okay, however, you can see that my even characteristic impedance actually increased. So you can see that they are actually inverse proportional. They don't proportional with the gap. Okay, basically, you can see that the relationship actually difference. When I actually reduce the gap from 1 to 0 0.8, you can see that my odd characteristic impedance actually also reduced together. Okay, but for my even characteristic impedance, you can see that they actually increase rather than decrease as compared to adjust the width of the my couple lines. Okay, I have also noticed this. Okay, quite a drastic change is actually on the odd. Not so much changes on the even when I actually adjust the gap. So in order to do a significant adjustment on the odd, I actually can control the gap. As you can see there, quite a big drastic change on the odd. Okay, about 3 ohms here. But over here, you can see there is only about 1 ohms on the even. So basically... With this, I'm ready to do some of the example here in order to understand better. So the first thing I, as I mentioned, these are all the desire. Okay, uh, this is what I have achieved so far, which is 53.6. I need to reduce them to 39.24. So therefore, I need to reduce my gap even more drastically. Okay, for example, let's say, okay, uh, let's say I reduce my gap to 0 0.2. Okay, I want to see what will be the outcome here. So the width still remain as 2 and the spacing I reduce to 0 0.2 now. Okay, let's see what will be the even and odd. Okay, the odd will be actually now become 40.1 ohms. Ooh, very good because 40.1 is quite close to 39.24. Okay, uh, even, uh, even is slightly way off because it's about 80.4. So you can see from here as... Okay, I need to adjust my even. Okay, but uh, even is much more harder to adjust. Okay, because I can only adjust through the width. Okay, because the gap actually control more on the odd. Okay, but the width will actually control the odd and also the even. So for now, let's say I want to change this here. I I need to reduce my even. Okay, so in order to reduce my even, I need to increase my width of the couple line. For example, let's say I do this as 0 0.24 okay, uh, millimeter and the gap I remain still at 0 0.2. Okay, I want to see what will be the effect. Okay, so uh, the width I actually increase to 2.4. Okay, so I do a reverse engineering. Okay, now I get my odd 
which is 37.5, okay, much lower than the desire. Oh, but over here, you can see that my even I quite close to the answer, which is 70.8, quite close. Okay, so again, if you still remember, okay, I can actually has a drastic effect on the odd by controlling the gap. Okay, and then my even, I will have less influencer. Okay, so what happened here is basically you can see here, I need to increase okay, uh, my odd characteristic impedance to 39.24 or as close to 39.44. So from here, okay, I can guess that I want to control the gap as I told you that the gap basically will control more on the odd. So I just want to up to guess, let's say 0 0.25. Okay, with the gap of 0 0.25. Let's see what will be the outcome here. So this will be 0 0.25. I do a calculate. Okay, so this will be my odd characteristic impedance, which is 39.1, okay, which is shown over here. And my even, which is 70.2. Hey, you can see from here, the answer are quite close. 39.1 versus 39.2, 70.6 versus 70.2. So from here, okay, I actually conclude that the width of the couple line will be 2.4 and the gap in between the couple line will be 0 0.25 all in millimeter in order to achieve the odd characteristic impedance of 39.1 and also the even characteristic of 70.2. Okay, so from here, I have shown you a reverse engineering, okay, how to obtain the characteristic impedance of the odd and also the even okay, by estimate what will be the width and also the gap so that finally we achieve the desired odd characteristic impedance and also the even characteristic impedance so as to achieve the first stage of carbon line. So with this, okay, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe to the channel. Guys, once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you.